Hey there, and welcome to episode number 13 of I'm Just Gonna Say It. I'm Aaron, your friendly internet renegade, and my co-host Oscar is with us uh, again. Today I want to talk a little bit more again about um, quantum physics, what it means to spirituality, and in particular um, remote viewing and the Stargate experiments in the 70s. Here we go with number 13. Hi. <laughs> okay, so today I want to talk a little bit about um, remote viewing and the Stargate project. Um, I don't know if you heard about it, but it's uh, like a project from Stanford University, which was done in the 1970s, uh, where they used remote viewing to actually spy on the Russians. Now, uh, five years ago, I was in, uh, in California, and I had the luck of uh, visiting Petaluma and. Uh, Palo Alto and I visited Russell Tark and Ed May there. They both were uh, researchers on the Stargate project and I had the luck of talking with them for a few hours. Okay, so what is remote viewing? Um, well, remote viewing is basically uh, viewing with the mind's eye places, people and or things uh, at a distance. That's the simple definition of it. Now in the 1970s, Stanford University started a series of experiments into remote viewing with a series of researchers, among which were uh, Russell Tark and Ed May, both physicists. So it didn't take long for the FBI to get involved in this, uh, in this situation because they were very interested in using uh, remote viewing to spy on the Russians, as it was the middle of the Cold War as well. So what is it they did uh, during those experiments? They worked with a number of remote viewers, the most notable of which was a man named Ingo Swan. He was a very down-to-earth guy actually, not the, the person you would expect uh, when you hear uh, the word medium. But anyway, they worked with him, uh, they actually put him in a Faraday cage, to uh, that's like a, an iron cage to shield you uh, from any um, electromagnetic interference and it would also prevent him from getting the information in another fashion like an earpiece or whatever. Anyway, they did a lot of remote viewing experiments with great success. I'll post some links to some studies in, in the description. But the most notable of those stories um, or of, of those experiments was one of was a story that uh, Russell Targ told me. There, uh, there was this place in Russia which the FBI had been researching for uh, for a long time already. It was uh, it was like 10 kilometers inland actually, but they were building a huge. Uh, they weren't sure what it was, dome type structure or whatever. Anyway, they put the pictures of that dome that they made by satellite in an envelope together with the coordinates, and they gave the, that envelope to Ingo Swan. He couldn't open it; he could just feel it and do his thing with it. Anyway. What did he s claim to see? He he told the FBI he that they were building uh, a submarine pen there, and that they were developing a new type of submarine with a very silent type of propulsion, um, and that it was going to be done on a certain date. And, and I don't remember the exact date, but let's say uh, November X. <laughs> Um, the FBI, of course, looked at this information and they said to him, well, like, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The, the, the building is 10 kilometers inland and uh, it doesn't make sense for them to make a, to make a, a submarine there. Anyway, uh, November X was approaching and about two weeks before that date, uh, lo and behold, they saw on the satellite images that they were building a trench towards the structure. And on November X, it seems Ingo Swan was right, because yes, a submarine was launched from the building. And it, it, the story might seem familiar to you, because uh, the movie The Hunt for the Red October was actually loosely based on that submarine. You remember maybe from the movie that it featured a submarine with uh, very modern and new propulsion technologies. So, I, I remember this as one of the most striking uh, examples of the remote viewing uh, that they told me about for as far as the American side goes, because they also told me about some Russian experiments that supposedly happened, and they went a lot further with the whole remote viewing thing. They actually did remote assassination, believe it or not, and according to, uh, to Russell and May, they actually uh, 
succeeded at one time to remotely asphyxiate a person by uh, yeah, mind over matter techniques, I guess you would say. So that seems pretty extreme. Of course, I also asked them the question, are they still doing it? Because um, that, that would seem an interesting question. And they said, in all probability, yes. But since they are not working on the project anymore, they have no idea what's, what's happening. But um, they said, since we had the success that we did, I can't imagine that they aren't still doing it. Now, in relation to this, I want to do a little promo as well. Um, especially for the people living in the Netherlands or close by. Saturday, June the 29th, the Society for Psychical Research, of which I am a board member, by the way, will uh, uh, host the Day of Parapsychology again in Amsterdam. And one of the guest speakers will be Ed May, actually, who I just uh, who I just talked about. So, for those of you who are interested, visit www.dutchspr.org, and you will find information there, and you can apply if you want to. Uh, go to the day. So maybe I'll see you there and until then love you guys like share subscribe and comment if you have anything interesting to say and Until the next video. Bye. Bye